Hello Floss Tube. this is Kim aka Spartan Stitcher on Instagram and I am back with another Floss Tube. This is number 22 I believe. Today is Monday the 24th of June. We are almost at the we're in the last week of uh, year four in the School of Magical Stitches and Literature for Goblet of Fire so it's the final push to try to get everything done to earn as many points as you want if you're so inclined and also finish off those June goals that you have so um, I'm back from vacation I'll talk about that at the end once I know how much time I have left to try to keep this in one video so I don't have to edit so uh, I gave you that mini update on last Friday to show you what I worked on so this is just what I've worked on since then um, for the homework this past week it was uh, you're making a love potion for the Yule Ball so you had to have uh, you had to do 200 stitches of each element um, water air earth and fire and also a fifth element for wood to try to make the love potion and then say if the potion worked or not um, as you know I only took three pieces with me on vacation and I was able to fit four out of those five elements into this piece which is Modern Folk Embroidery's Four Seasons Sal from 2018. Let's see if it'll focus. Okay so there's snowflakes for water, birds for the air, um, there's trees down here for the wood, and um, just plants and things growing I think is what I, I said for the earth. So I did 800 stitches into this and um, wasn't really after the one over one to get that page finished on Big Red Ship. I wasn't really feeling as much one over one on 28 count but I did my 800 stitches. So there you go. This is all within you know when this was a sal that they split it up um, into 12 sections so this was all for the January section of the sal which is kind of like one page worth to, to bring it down here so I, I finished up this uh, corner and then brought the border down and did this entire motif and then this will be the the central um, part of winter so 800 stitches into that. I'll show you that one more time so you can see where I was working. So I got this big side Quaker motif done and started working on that border that goes in the center. So 800 stitches onto that. Um, I had plenty of time to stitch while I was at the beach. The problem was is that we were in a uh, vacation rental and there was nearly 30 of us there. Uh, my two girls were the only kids, so they were the only ones that went to bed early. So you're talking over 25 people in one common area at night, um, drinking, playing cards, playing dice games. It got very loud. Um, and of course, if I wanted to stitch, I needed to be in that common area so I could see what I was doing. Luckily, the girls did not need me to be in the same room as them after they went to bed. They they had tuckered themselves out. So I did stitch some more, but what was hard was the counting. Because it was so loud and because I kept getting interrupted by people just being curious about what I was stitching. So after I finished the 800 stitches on Four Seasons, I decided to work for my own goals and I did not count these stitches for a task, um, but I worked on Guardian Angel by Lavender and Lace. And last you knew I was down here in this corner of her dress. And so what I was able to do is I now see the bottom of the dress. So I finished off this section and just started working this way and, and filling in all the different greens. Um, so all that dark green got filled in a little bit here under the flowers because that was incomplete. And then started filling in the medium greens and um, that's as far as I got. Hold on just one second. Pause. Okay so um, what I was reminded of as I was talking about this 
is that this is the piece um, that I did uh, do on the airplane. Um, because obviously I'm not going to work on 25 count over 1 or 28 count 1 over 1 on the airplane. So this was 28 count over 2. Much easier to do on an airplane when, when things are moving around. Still hard to, to place a needle when you're going through turbulence. But I was able to fill in all that lighter green on the airplane. And I'll talk about the glasses at the end. Um, okay, and then when I got home, I had to finish up the homework on Sunday uh, before the homework ended. So for the element of fire, I chose to work on Pretty Little Paris. I do not have the picture of this printed out. Most people know what it work looks like. But what's important to know is it's got a hot air balloon. And how do hot air balloons function? With fire. So... I did, um, I finished up the basket and you can't hardly see it, but there, yeah, there you go. There's a little ropes between the basket and the balloon. And then I worked more on the Eiffel Tower to get my 200 stitches for fire to finish the homework. And then I realized we have a week left in June. I have not touched my piece for Full Coverage Fanatic's monthly theme of summer fun, which is also my by the numbers 1200 piece um, so I had some time last night before I had to work on my uh, 90 day piece so I pulled out Sunday Delight and I'm working on this page down with the banana because everyone likes ice cream in the summertime and I think last night I did about 300 350 stitches just simple filling this part of the banana and then after I, I fill this in, there's some other big areas of color that hopefully will quickly get me to um, 2,400 tent stitches is what I need to get by the numbers done for, for this month, which I'll talk about in a minute. So, um, and then lastly, my 90-day challenge piece and full coverage Fanatics is Oh Baby, and I'm on the page that never ends again up here. Um, I did work on this every day while I was on vacation, and once we got back, um, I'm within about 150 stitch 10 stitches of my By the Numbers 2400, which means 4,800 10 stitches. So I need about 150 more. So now this green section is completely done. There are some darker greens that that um, are right at this border where the where the main ends, and some other greens in here for the fence line that I talked about before that I still need to do. Um, so I will get my by the numbers done on this piece. That will be no problem because we still have. Uh, what, seven days exactly? Yeah, counting today, seven days exactly for the rest of the month. I will not get my third page finish on this piece for the quarter. Um, I just have too many other things that I need to get done. And while it doesn't look like much, there's this is where the confetti is. So this, this was just dithering like I've talked about. This wasn't that much confetti, but it's these in-between pieces that have more of the confetti. But I'll keep working on it, and I will show you next week this ending point on this piece. Okay. I'll talk about the glasses quickly. So, because I'm prone to motion sickness, um, and to make sure these things actually worked, I figured the best way to test them out would be to actually get myself to the point where I was nauseous, motion sick, and then put them on and wear them for the 10 minutes and see if they worked. So, um, the problem being is that we had very early mornings, both travel days. We woke up, um, the first, first travel day to get down to, we went, so we were flying into Pensacola, Florida, and driving to Gulf Shores, Alabama is where the uh, vacation was. And Gulf Shores, if you don't know, um, it's on an, an island or a, or a peninsula part on the very lowest part of Alabama. 
and Pensacola is the closest airport. So from North Dakota, almost straight south to um, Pensacola. So we woke up that first day to get down there at 4.30 in the morning um, because our flight was at 6.45. So we had to, you know, pack everything out of the hotel and get to the airport through security and all that. So I was tired. I don't really feel like stitching, but I did um, read and I played like Mahjong on my tablet. And so I was doing things. I was trying to make myself sick. Didn't get sick. Both flights down to Pensacola didn't get sick at all. And there was even some turbulence. And I was, if I wasn't dozing because um, I had my, my youngest daughter was sitting with me, oldest daughter was sitting with my husband. And so she took two short naps, one on each flight. Um, and so then I might doze off while, while she was out. But I was, I was, I wasn't stitching, but I was reading and, you know, playing on my tablet and trying to get sick. Never got sick. So I never tried these on the way down. And then on the way back, I read almost the entire, like, again, we had to get up at 4.15 because we had to drive from um, Gulf Shores to Pensacola, which is an hour, get through security and everything. So 4.15, wake up. And... Um, I think we flew through Dallas. So I read a lot because I was finishing up my big book for School of Magical Stitches. Finished that book. Played Mahjong. Never got sick. Second, the second flight is when I did the stitching on uh, Angel. Even through turbulence, through the, you know, when you're descending and going through the cloud layers. Never got sick. I'm like, well, shoot, I'm not going to be able to get to try out these glasses. But when we landed, it was, um, by the time we left the airport, it was about 6 p.m. And we had a two-hour drive to get back home. So we um, picked up some McDonald's drive through And I've told you before when I talked about these that the quickest way for me to get sick, I'm like motion sick, is if I'm in the passenger seat and I have to turn around and keep helping my children in the back seat. Wouldn't you know it? Even though, you know, before we, we, we went through the drive-thru, got the food, pulled into a parking spot, got everybody started eating everything they needed so I wouldn't have to be turning around as much. But I still had to turn around a few times and I started getting car sick. I wore these for 10 minutes. It did seem to improve, but it only lasted about five minutes. And I started, you know feeling nauseous again. So then I went to my, my second option is I usually just, you know, lean back and close my eyes. And I tried that for 20 minutes and it wasn't helping. And I thought, sure, I was going to lose my dinner. Um, even had my husband pull over, <coughs> got some fresh air, held on to it, but I was miserable. I had to drive the remaining 30 miles home. Uh, so we got home and, um, Got the important stuff put away, got the kids put to bed, and I, you know, was trying to relax, but I still felt bad. And, you know, we got home at 8.15 in the evening, and I went to bed about two hours later, and I still felt bad. I, I put 10 stitches into Oh Baby that night just to say that I did it and, and to keep myself in the challenge. So... You know, I had been up since 4.15. It was 10 o'clock at night, and I said, I got to do my stitches. So I put 10 stitches into OAV that night. Luckily, the next day, yesterday, I felt fine. But, moral of the story, these glasses don't work for me. Um, I did not try wearing them a second time, but it said it's supposed to work after 10 minutes. So, I don't know. If you're interested in trying them, instead of me sending these all the way back to overseas and getting my money back, which was only like $20 anyways, if you're watching this and you want to try these and you live in the United States, um, put on put a comment down below that you, you want to try the glasses 
And if there's more than one person, I will do a random random draw and I'll mail these to you because I still have um, like the, the canister and everything they were mailed in. So if you want to try these out, leave me a comment that you want to try the glasses. Um, and we'll see. I mean, just because they didn't work for me doesn't mean they, they might work for you. Um, so there, there's your report on the glasses. And for plans, um, this week's homework in the School of Magical Stitches is the end of the year for uh, year four. So there's a bunch of different things. Um, there's six different tasks that you can do depending on the task, 100 or 200 stitches each. Or you can do the penalty stitches for uh, fewer points. The first task is two items touching uh, 200 stitches because of the port key. Um, and the two items just have to be in the piece. You don't have to stitch on them. Um, so my, my idea for that one, just to try to simplify things because I have this for other, other tasks, was to work on stretch, Haunted Mansion stretch portraits. Um, by Good Morning Maui on Etsy. There's a bunch of things that are touching in that one. People. Um, people sitting on things. So that was my idea for that one. The next task is 200 stitches in black or gray for Voldemort returning. Uh, my piece for that one would be uh, Trick or Treat by Randall Spangler because I'm doing that one in all black. The third task is 100 stitches on a graveyard scene. Hello, it's a graveyard scene. I could also do trick or treat because there are two gravestones in trick or treat. So <clears throat> that's another option. Um, the fourth task is 200 stitches on a piece you needed help with because Harry seemed to have help from his parents. Um, I didn't write down a possibility for this one. It would probably be <coughs> Pretty Little Paris because, as you know, I was originally going to stitch this on Fiddler's Ada, and it turns out that Helen D. had a much better idea with the gray. So she helped me with that one. And the fifth task is 200 stitches on a polyjuice potion ingredient because they discovered Mad-Eye Moody um, was being impersonated, and <coughs> one of the ingredients in Polyjuice potion is leeches, and for the previous a previous year we did something that sucks. Come on, one over one, twenty eight count. Anything by Teresa Wensler is difficult. Or I could um, work more on angel because of lacewing flies because the angel flies. Um, and then the last task is a hundred stitches on a whip that makes you laugh, and that again would be port stretch it. Haunted Mansion stretch portraits. I can't talk right now. However, although um, I have, like I told you, I still have a lot of stitches that I need to do on Sunday Delight to reach my goals for this one. For the by the numbers twelve hundred. Um, I still haven't my still haven't finished the last extra credit task of 500 stitches on something you could find in a maze, which I was going to do the Twisted Vine, but 500 stitches one over one. And what I really want to be working on is my angel. So I have no idea what I'm, what I'm going to work on. Um, I've already done a few stitches today into a baby. It's easy to get those filling stitches on Sunday to like, I need to give myself permission to not kill myself to try to earn all the points, all the possible points. I've already done that with the reading. There's like last, for year three, I didn't, I missed one of the reading tasks. Um, and for year four, I have the Goblet of Fire, I have the big book. And I only have two of the reading extra credit done, and I'm halfway through a third book. Um, I'm not going to get all that reading done. But I have always earned all the points possible. I don't think I can get all that done in 
I don't think I can get all six tasks of the homework, my 500 stitches for the maze, my full coverage phonetics, um, by the numbers, 1200. I don't think I can get all that done in a week. So I have to, f I have to figure out my priorities. I don't know what I'm going to work on, but at least those are, those are things that I could work on this week. Um, the other thing is uh, grading for year four. My grading team, the, the Ravenclaw and Gryffindor prefix, were behind. Uh, we're still trying to finish up week four, and this is currently week eight. And then after this week is over, we can grade all the extra credit. We can grade the, the books. So we have a lot of grading coming up. Um, I'm currently waiting for other prefix to do their part so I can keep doing my assigned grading tasks. So that plays into how I'm, what I'm going to work on and how much time I'll have to work on this week too. So I really don't know what I'm, what I'm going to, what I'm going to do, but, um, yeah, I kind of already told you about the vacation. It was fun. You can tell I didn't get much sun because I know that I burn. And, um, okay, so there was a pool at the beach house that was really nice. Um, the actual beach, if, if you're not in the United States, you haven't been to the beach a lot, you may not know that, um, any public beach access, they usually have a flag flying and the flag is to tell you the conditions of the current day. And there's a different color flag depending on what the conditions are. So there's green, yellow, red. Um, there's one for rip currents or like uh, bacterial, bacterial algae, you know, unsafe conditions. There's different flags. Um, every day that we were there, the flag was either yellow or red. So the waves were kicking. Um, it was hard for me to stand up even, you know, just above my knees in the water without getting knocked over by the waves. The waves were big. And there was a slight rip current. And I watched a video uh, before we went that actually it was really cool how to tell if there is a rip current before you even get into the water. And as you see the wave come up onto the beach, if the water doesn't go immediately backwards, but instead it travels parallel along, along the beach, like makes a little river and then um, goes back down into the water. <clears throat> so essentially the water's coming up this way and coming up this way and coming up this way, but then the water flows and goes this way before returning to the ocean. So that's a way to um, identify that there's a rip and there almost every day there was a little bit of a, of a rip current. Um, my girls weren't really into the beach. They, they went a few times. They like searching for shells. We brought some shells home. Um, but they like the pool much better. So they spent a lot of time in the pool. And as I said, a lot of card games, a lot of dice games. Uh, we went to Pensacola to the Naval Air Station and went to the Naval, uh, Aviation Museum. And we also saw the Blue Angels doing one of their practice days even though it was really really hot and we took my girls for their first game of mini golf on another hot day um that was an exercise in frustration just because it was so hot and they'd never played mini golf before but it's all they enjoyed it for my husband and i it was like it's too hot for to be doing this but um it's all memories and then we flew back home. So it was good to get a break, but it was good to be home, even though it is North Dakota. Um, instead of heat index of like 108 down, down where we were, we're back up to North Dakota where it's like 70s. It's much nicer. So uh, I wish you all have a good stitchy week and I will see you next week to show you how far I get on uh, my last week for oh baby and what I actually end up working on and if I reach all my goals. So it shall be interesting. 
Uh, have a good week, guys. Again, let me know if you aren't interested in trying out the glasses. And I'll see you later. Bye, guys.